Hey, well, welcome to another episode of 10 with Tom. My name's Tom, and this is where we get to explore faith together 10 minutes at a time. Today, I'm talking about climbing Everest, lip balm, and frozen fingers. So hey guys, this week's 10 with Tom is a little bit different. I just want to kind of have a conversation with you as if we were sitting together uh, around a coffee table or in our lounge. You know, I've been away the last couple of weeks. If you are a regular listener of 10 with Tom or watch 10 with Tom, you'll know we had Wayne, we had Kesh, one with Wayne, sesh with Kesh. I heard that was great. Um, so if you missed those, catch up. But today I'm back from this trip. I did a trip, if you don't know, uh, up to Everest Base Camp where we climbed up to base camp, did a crazy obstacle course up a peak called Kalapatar, and then uh, on the same day raced down and did the world's highest marathon. So it sounds crazy, and if it does sound crazy to you, it's because it was, mm -hmm. and I'm glad I'm alive, mm -hmm. and I'm back, and I'm excited to be back with you. But I just wanted to share some of the experience of that, and I'm sure that over the next couple of weeks and months, uh, more of those kind of stories will come out because uh, just as I'm sort of processing what actually took place. But the thing that I actually want to talk about today is little things that make a big difference. And what I realize is like people say, oh, you know, you did this amazing thing on the race and, and you know, it was, must have been crazy. And, and to, to be honest, that, that day was and it was a huge achievement for myself and I was very proud of what I was able to accomplish. But what I realized about it is that it was actually less about the race day and, you know, the obstacle course and all of that. It was actually more about uh, kind of like exposure to the elements and just this sort of slow attrition that took place uh, throughout the hike up to base camp so that on the day that you actually wake up to do this marathon you are already so depleted you've got a headache you can't breathe properly you aren't sleeping anymore and uh, many of the team weren't able to eat um, because you just don't want to eat and the food is pretty terrible up there um, and so you know it's just nine days of just like you're not eating you're not sleeping you're not able to shower you're not able to eat normal stuff um, and now you've got to wake up and do this huge race and it feels like just getting out of bed is a massive achievement and what I realized people ask like what made you different from other people you know of the 34 people that started only four managed to finish in the time cap um, and finish the race and I think um, and honestly, for me, it was as much a surprise to me, honestly, as it was to everyone else, because there's like these crazy athletes there and ex-Navy SEALs and all that sort of stuff. But what I realized and what I attribute to, aside from I really did feel like God was, was carrying me much of the way, um, is that I really do think that we came down to small little details. Um, and I've spoken about this many times. I mean, the scriptures are full of this all over the place. Luke 16, 10, one who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. If you have faith like a grain of mustard, you'll say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Um, it's the smallest of seeds, Jesus says, but when it is grown, in, uh, it is the larger of all the garden plants and is able to give nest to many birds. You know, uh, Zechariah says, do not despise these small beginnings. You know, so throughout scripture, we see over and over again this idea of that the fact that little things make a big difference, that we're, we're faithful with little things then we're entrusted with more and able to handle more. And I realized like so much of, I think, what, um, what enabled me to carry on and be sort of, not I wouldn't say strong, but survive on the last day was that I was pedantic about little details. Like I was constantly applying lip balm, like good old Zambuck, best uh, South African invention. Um, I was constantly applying, I was really, really pedantic about my like face cream because your face gets so dry. Um, I was always covering my mouth and face with a buff so that you're not breathing in the cold air and allowing sort of dust and I was gonna say yak poo, but yeah, yak, I don't know if you can cut that out, but literally yak poo particles and cold air, which now dries out your throat. And of course people started getting coughs. Um, and there were people whose lips started to blister. And of course, then they didn't want to eat and it was painful to eat, which then decreases your energy. Um, once your skin starts to crack, you feel painful. You don't, you know, it's like, so it's all these little things like making sure your neck is always covered, your ears and your extremities are covered. Like I didn't get my gloves right. And that was, a, it almost stopped my race because my fingers were so frozen and I still don't have too much feeling on these two fingers. But it, it, you know, gear is so important, like making sure you layer correctly. And like, again, this may be something you'll never do or want to do or have any interest in doing. But I think the principle applies that when we take care of the small things, then that leads to bigger things. Craig Rochelle's famous quote, I've used it many times, it's the small things that no one sees that results in the big things everyone wants. And so yes, there's glory and races and big accomplishments, but I honestly think it starts with taking care of small little details, um, making sure your nails are cut clean. All these things have an impact when you're at those kinds of extreme environments. 
And again, you may never want to climb a mountain or go to Everest, but I think in all of our lives, we're all facing mountains, we're all facing obstacles. And in many ways, we've been through two years of, of, of extremity, like the world is thrown out of whack and we're facing things and dealing with things. And my encouragement to you is in this season, particularly as we head towards Christmas and the busyness and craziness of Christmas, is instead of trying to focus on all the big stuff or how we're going to get through this, rather just focus on doing the next right little thing and taking control of that which you can control. Um, you know, you can't control necessarily whether the economy goes up or down or whether fuel prices continue to spike, but you can decide whether you're going to buy that coffee or not. You know, you can decide how you're going to spend the resources you do have. Um, maybe that's a, sorry, that was a terrible example. Like, how dare you tell me not to drink my coffee? But it's those little decisions. And so whatever that looks like for you, um, the scriptures say, do not despise small beginnings. Be faithful in the little things and you'll be given more. And so that is my encouragement to you today for 10 with Tom. It's the little things that make a big difference. We'll see you next time. So hey guys, um, today's 10 with Tom is a little different. I'm just going to kind of have... No. So hey guys, this... <laughs> Don't get into a funk now, Thomas. No.